There we go. I think that's okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Hello, new subscribers. So many of you have come on board to join the fun. I hope you're having fun. I sure am. Uh, I have a little something different to share with you today. I kind of have spring fever here in New Jersey. It's been a little on the warmer side for February. Things are popping out of the ground. We've got tulips coming up, daffodils, my Lenten rose. Um, that's been trying to bloom. So very excited for spring. Um, so I did a project that I kind of combined some painting, some furniture painting in with gardening to kind of get a little bit of that into my life right now. Um, definitely need to have some of that into my life when it is appropriate and it is the time. So I wait, wait, wait all through the cold winter and then uh, like to start some seeds. So this year I promised myself that I would figure out a way to get a um, like a, a seed starting box going or a setup of some sort um, to be able to start my seeds inside and then be able to carry them outside to harden them off once it gets warm enough that you can leave them out there a little bit longer. What I did in these last couple of um, weeks is use two old drawers that I had left over from a previous project that have been like teetering on top of piles of uh, staged furniture pieces waiting to get refinished. And they were kind of blocking my, um, my creativity a little bit because they were there, I needed to do something with them. I didn't wanna throw them out because they were kind of cool. And so I was like, yes, this is the perfect opportunity to kind of tackle two tasks that I wanted to tackle and to keep things moving. So I made mini greenhouses out of old drawers. Um, this is a very lighthearted project, very simple project. It can be as simple or as elaborate as you want it to be. Mine's kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, but really it's a lighthearted project. This is not a serious like furniture flip or anything like that. It's very lighthearted opportunity for you to get your paint brushes out and just kind of be a little wild, be a little whimsical if you want to. Um, sometimes I can kind of get stuck in a rut of doing the same thing over and over and over. So this was a good opportunity for me to just turn my brain off and just go with whatever paint colors and techniques my body, you know, wanted to do. So um, it's a really good mental exercise in that way too. A fun project for kids, for grandkids. You can watch the seeds grow together, paint the box together, fill the box together, watch the seeds grow together. There are multiple um, ways that you can utilize your box. You can fill it with soil if you want to. It's not a big deal. I didn't. I did a little fancy decoupage with newspapers on the bottom, which I'll show you, um, just because I'm going to put seed starting trays in there and I just wanted to have something fun on the bottom. But you can certainly fill your box with soil because it's really, I mean, it's a leftover drawer that probably would have gotten thrown out anyway. It can be in the garden for a couple of years and if it disintegrates, oh well. That's what happens with raised beds anyway. They disintegrate over time because they're wood, but you get a lot of enjoyment out of them while they're here with us. So lighthearted people, impermanence. Decorate it, fill it with whatever you want and watch it grow and have fun. So that's what this project is all about. So come on, let's do this. But first, I want to give a shout out to a couple of subscribers that helped me figure out a better way to stage my dark, dingy basement. Oh, hello, Gus. I got a buddy coming up. He might, you might see him jump in a minute. Um, to stage my dark, dingy basement, hang up um, a drop cloth. So I'm just gonna take you through that process really quickly, show you um, what I did, and I'm actually pretty happy with it. There's one thing that I might change, but I'm gonna kind of sit on it a little bit, take a few pictures with it, and see how it goes. Um, I did a little stenciling on the drop cloth just to add some dimension. 
uh, I didn't want to add color because I wanted it to be white, but it was kind of creamy color, so I added a white stencil, kind of random all over. I'm not sure if I love it or not. I'm still working that out. But Georgie and Kathleen, thank you for your help. You guys helped me figure out the um, the drop cloth. Uh, no brainer. I, I should have thought of that, but I'm so glad that you helped me figure that out because uh, I, I obviously hadn't thought of that. Um, so I just was able to take down some lights and hang up this drop cloth and um, I'll take you through that quick process. So I will timestamp if you just want to get into the mini greenhouse using the old recycled drawers. I will timestamp in the description box below. You can go right there. I got you. You don't have to walk through my process of hanging a drop cloth. Um, but if you are interested in seeing how I did how I did the drop cloth and how I did the lighting, um, I also got some new lights from uh, Amazon. I don't know if anybody's uh, ever watched Kasha, Kacha, Kacha, am I saying that right? But she is just an amazing furniture artist. I love her style, beautiful, beautiful pieces, but her lighting has always interested me. She's got some pretty killer uh, high-end lighting going on. I did not splurge for that entire setup, but I did incorporate two of the studio lights that she uses. Um, I haven't set them up yet, I'm waiting for my big furniture um, piece that I have coming up next, now that the drawers are out of the way. So welcome everybody, we're almost to 500. Thank you very much. We're very close. I think we're like over 400, 415 or something like that now. Um, the reason I need to get to 500 is so I can have a community tab so that I can send little pictures, send little updates, ask you guys little questions, see what you wanna see. Um, what you like, what you don't like, stuff like that. And um, yeah, just a better way to communicate. So looking forward to that. Um, so I kind of did a whole studio reset. You'll see some differences around here, I hope. And let's get to this project that I'm so excited to share with you. Now, be open-minded, open-minded, because the one box turned out like a bit crazy. I almost like painted all over it. But my daughter said, no, it is so cute, mom, you have to keep it. So go easy on me <laughs> when you see the Angry Beetle box. Now, if I could play for you right now, working nine to five by Dolly Parton, I would, <laughs> but I think I would probably get sued for copyright infringement. So, I'm just gonna play some music while this whole thing rolls through. It's pretty self-explanatory. You guys know my basement and, um, you know, I just hung some new lights and hung up this drop cloth and I think it made a big difference. I'm not in love with the stenciling that you'll see coming up, but I'm gonna live with it for now, kind of let it sit with me, and if I need to paint over it, I shall.
Here are the drawers. You might remember these drawers from the Ugly Duckling project that I did. I did think they had interesting characteristics, so I just couldn't throw them out. Um, so first thing, clean, clean, clean with, I used Simple Green and water. And then I went through with a shop vac and a little bit of a scraper and got some of the loose paint off. Wear a mask, wear a mask, because you don't know what kind of paint this is. Um, also, I thought it would be a good idea to encapsulate the paint because I wasn't sure what kind of paint it was. If you're dealing with lead, you want to make sure that you encapsulate it to some degree. Um, you don't want lead floating around in the air. I grabbed a piece of lumber uh, from my pile and just cut some legs for one of the boxes. I'm going to give one of the boxes to my mom. Surprise, mom. Um, so I thought that the legs would be a good idea for her. And going to Ace, always needing to go to the hardware store. I like to cover up any details that are on the inside of pieces that what you saw me do with the blue tape there just because I think that it gives you the history and you can always look back and say, hey, that's what that was. So, oh, this is where it gets elaborate for me. I put in some supports in the middle because the drawers were quite large and I just wanted to add some supports in the middle. So this is where the elaborate part comes in. I did drill some pocket holes and put this support beam in the middle just in case I put a heavier pot in later after the seed trays were done. Um, you don't have to do that. It's really not necessary. It's kind of overkill to some degree, but I thought for me, I wanted to try and do that. So that's what I did. Pre-drilling some holes here for the four legs that will go on later. and also drilling some drainage holes. An extra optional step if you want to keep the wood from rotting quickly. And that's why they say don't paint in the wind. So just to recap, I've got Bohemian Blue on the front of the drawer, and then the sides here I painted with this Benjamin Moore exterior paint. I had some laying around from a door that I had done in the house a while back. I thought the exterior paint was a good choice because it does not fade quickly. And also, these are furniture feet. I went ahead and gel stained the legs with this Java gel stain, I love this color. And then, ladies and gentlemen, so here's my tip of the day. I'm like Vanna White. Chopsticks. If you guys have leftover chopsticks, throw them in your workshop because they make fantastic stir sticks for your paint. And it is a reduce, reuse, recycle tip. And I hope that it's a new tip for you and you're like, hey girl, that's awesome. So I'm gonna play some music now and just sit back and enjoy this creative process. It was fun.
Part of my new studio setup includes this new wire rack, which I am going to turn a shelf into a grow station. This is the light I bought. Super easy assembly. It comes with the six inch wires already to go. All you have to do is plug them in. I thought the easiest way to do this would be to use these S hooks and suspend the shop light from the bottom of that shelf. All right, guys, we're almost finished. Let's fill this baby up and get cooking on these seeds. Yes, Vanna, we see you. This is another optional piece here. I had the Ace Hardware cut me a piece of plexiglass to fit over the top of my drawer here. Um, I measured and then just had them cut it to size so that it was a cleaner look and it just fits snug right over the top and it's just easier to deal with when you need to water. Otherwise, you could just use the plastic lids that come with these seed trays. I can already see where I might improve this a little bit. I think I might put some tin foil along the back edge there so that it reflects the light in there better. And a heating pad underneath might not be a bad idea. This is where the seeds will come when I need to harden them off. I get a good sunny location there. Um, and plus it looks pretty with all the colors. Here is Angry Beetle, guys. Here she is. I don't know why she's so angry, but we'll keep her. Actually, Mom, she's all yours. <laughs> thanks for joining me, everyone. Subscribe if you've had some fun. Uh, thanks for helping me get the spring fever out. And hopefully I get the community tab soon and we can watch these plants grow together and then we'll put them out in the garden. But until then, be happy, be healthy, everyone, and I will see you next time.